Hey everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's guest I met probably eight or nine years ago, maybe seven, I don't remember, at the Veg Fest in New Orleans. It's also when I met Josh Lajani as well, and she's just adorable. She has a book and she has a blog, and she's gonna be making an amazing recipe today called chickpea chili, chipotle chickpea chili, and I can't wait to catch up with her. Her name is Bianca Phillips. She's in Memphis. Welcome to the show, Bianca. Nice to see you again. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. I can't wait. So what have you been doing the last seven or eight years? Well, um, I actually haven't been working on new books. So I, my book came out in 2012, and I have, I've started on some other book projects and kind of lost interest and mostly just been cooking lots of other people's recipes for the past few years, just kind of like not, you know, creating a lot and just there's so many good books out that I just want to cook everyone else's stuff. So I've been doing a lot of that. Um, uh, gosh, I'm, I've been running a lot. So I'm, uh, since I've met you, I've started distance running. And so I've been doing a lot of that. And marathons and uh, 50K and all that stuff. So that's taken up a lot of my time is just training for that stuff. Um, yeah. That's cool. I remember, you know, I haven't traveled, you know, obviously since the pandemic. So it's been almost a year now. And I would go all over the place. And the only place I never could find anything to eat was the Memphis Air airport. Has the South changed at all? Uh, it has. Actually, Memphis has gotten pretty vegan friendly. The airport probably still isn't very vegan friendly, unfortunately. I think there may be like a um, place there to get a vegan burrito now. But um, uh, but there's lots of places in the city that have, there's, we have one, two, actually two totally vegan restaurants right now. Um, and then we have several places that are vegan friendly that are, you know, vegetarian mostly, or maybe have a few meat dishes, but are kind of mostly vegan. And then there are plenty of places that have like separate vegan menus. So, um, actually on my blog, which is vegan crunk, I have a Memphis vegan dining guide on there where I've listed every place that I know of that has vegan food in Memphis. And there's quite a bit. That's so cool. So how long have you been vegan and how, how has it been being the only vegan in the South practically? <laughs> the only vegan in the South. Um, I have been vegan for 16 years um, and I was vegetarian before that. So um, uh, vegetarian for 26 years, vegan for 16. Uh, when I went vegan, it was um, 2002. And so at that time, I, I felt like I was the only vegan in the South. <laughs> I wasn't, but um, there was not not a lot of options in this part of the world. Um, you pretty much had to cook at home, every, but uh, things have really changed a lot in the past 16 years. And, you know, the, as you know, the, the products have gotten amazingly better. Um, just restaurants everywhere offer options. So um, it's definitely improved for sure. <laughs> That's great. Just make sure you speak loudly because I you're, I know you're not real close to your microphone. I want to make sure everybody hears you. I have a copy of your book, but I forgot to grab it. Why don't you show it to us? Okay. Um, now this is uh, Cooking Crunk, Eating Vegan in the Dirty South, and it came out in 2012. Um, and it's a collection of vegan Southern recipes. I uh, grew up in Arkansas, actually, and um went vegetarian, like I said, when I was young, I was 14 and I went vegetarian. And so my mom and my grandma kind of both started cooking their family favorites um, as, um, as vegetarian. And then later when I went vegan, they um, started kind of veganizing their recipes. And I actually also, as I went vegan, started to veganize some of those family recipes. And so I ended up putting a book together of just like these Southern classics. There's, you know, a vegan, um, biscuits and gravy in here there's um uh i know we don't do i know you don't do oil but there there are some oil recipes in here and so there's some vegan fried chicken and um i've actually started to use a lot less oil in my cooking now but this came out when i was still eating quite a bit of oil so i've adapted a lot of the recipes uh since then to be oil free but uh you will find some of that stuff in here because it's kind of the, the stuff that i grew up eating um but yeah it's just a bunch of southern recipes so that's cool. What does crunk mean? So crunk is actually a style of rap music. Uh, I'm in Memphis now. I grew up in Arkansas, moved to Memphis right after college. And um, there's a style of rap music called crunk. Um, they've heard of Triple Six Mafia. They're probably one of the, the biggest crunk groups. Um, and I am a huge fan of rap music and crunk rap and Memphis rap. And so uh, I wanted to kind of, I wanted to have my book kind of 
kind of be part of this region and kind of just show that, you know, it's, it's a Memphis thing. It's a Southern mid South thing. And so, uh, to me, the word, and I also, the word crunk has sort of been adapted to mean like, um, you know, if you are at a party and the party gets wild, that's a, it's a crunk party, you know? So it kind of means like excited and, you know, fun and wild and whatever. So it's kind of a, you don't look like you're even old enough to be out of college yet. You look really young. Well, thank you. I just turned 40 last week. So well, happy birthday. <laughs> awesome. All right. So you're going to make a, a, a CCC, Chipotle chickpea chili. Yeah. And so I picked this recipe because it's, it's really easy to make. And it's that, you know, we're getting into the time of the year here in Memphis. Uh, we went from 80 degrees last week to 50 degrees this week, and it's dark and dreary and cloudy. And so fall has definitely arrived here. So I thought it'd be fun to make a a chili recipe because everyone loves chili when it gets cool outside. Um, and so I'm going to start. Um, so in the book, if you see the recipe in the book, it, it says to saute the onions in a little oil. I have since changed that to do a water saute because I found that you really just don't need oil to saute things. And so I'm going to start and heat my um, pot here. And I'm going to add just a couple of tablespoons of water. Um, when you're doing a water saute, you don't need much water. And some people actually don't even use water to start. They'll just put the onions directly in the pot and kind of let them get a little browned. Um, but I find unless you have a really, really good nonstick pot or skillet, they can stick a little bit. So I like to start with just a little bit of water and you want to let that heat for just a second. And then you'll add your onions first. Um, it's best to always start with onions before you do other vegetables because the onions can uh, kind of caramelize a little bit before you add everything else. So, um, so that's kind of heating. I'm gonna go ahead. I've got uh, one onion that's been chopped already. It's a white onion. You could use yellow onions, sweet onions, any kind of onion you want. So I'm gonna put this in. And, uh, and so you're just gonna let this, oops, I got some, I dumped, I dumped the garlic in here, sorry. We're gonna grate that in a second. So I'm gonna pull those out. Um, but I'm gonna just let the onions just go for a minute or two just to kind of get a little bit of caramelization going before we add anything else to the pot. Um, yeah, so. Nice. Yeah. Okay, do, you ever use it, do you ever use an instant pot? I do actually, it's, it's right back here. <laughs> um, I uh, mostly actually use it as a rice cooker, uh, interestingly. I make so much brown rice and I find that it just does a perfect brown rice where I don't have to worry about the water boiling over or you know, not cooking all the way through. Um, I have been using it for some like dry beans and that kind of thing. But um, yeah, I haven't done, I haven't experimented with the full abilities of it yet, but um, I use it to make uh, vegan yogurt in there. So yeah, it's. You know, my favorite rice comes, at least, at least that's where I found it was in the South. It was called Texmati. Have you ever tried it? I don't think I have. I found it when I was in Texas and they have an organic brown. I don't know. It's just, it's so good. It's, it's delicious. I'll have to look for that. Yeah. I'm, I'm from Arkansas, which is, you know, rice country. There's rice fields all over the place. So, um, but I'll look for that. Okay. I can hear the onions. They're starting to sizzle a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and start um, putting the garlic in. And I have three cloves of garlic that have already been peeled and um, you can mince garlic. Uh, you can use a garlic press, but what I like to do is uh, I use a microplane grater because you can get a super, super fine uh, grate on the garlic and it's just a little easier, I think. So I'm gonna grate this garlic in the pot. Once you get the garlic in, you just want to stir really quickly and then incorporate it into the onions and make sure it doesn't burn. And we'll let that go for another minute or so. Um, the key with garlic is just not to let it burn because it will. Uh, when you're doing the water saute though, as long as you keep a little bit of water in the pot, it kind of keeps that garlic from sticking. What made you first decide to go vegetarian and then vegan? Well, um, 
I always have loved animals. I always had pets growing up. And so I made that connection pretty early on that um, there was no difference between eating, you know, a pig or a cow versus eating, you know, my cat or my dog. So um, when I made that realization, I wanted to go vegetarian. I was probably eight at that time. But my mom was sort of like, oh, I don't know what to do about that. So she, um, she kind of discouraged it at that time because she didn't know what to cook for me. Um, and so a few years later, when I was 14, um, my best friend at the time was from India and her whole family was vegetarian. And I spent a week with her family and I ate all vegetarian meals at their house. And I saw how easy it was. And so when I got home, I told my parents that I'm going vegetarian. And they were like, what are you going to eat? And I'm like, I've been eating vegetarian for a week and I'm fine. <laughs> so, um, so at that point I decided to do it. And so I think I gave up, um, beef and pork first. And then I added chicken and fish a few months later. Um, and then fast forward 10 years later, I went vegan in 04. So it was 94 for vegetarian, I went vegan in 04. And for me, that was just kind of, I had gone 10 years being vegetarian. I was aware of, you know, what happens at egg farms and on dairy farms. And I just thought it's been 10 years, I should make the next step. So I just did a 30 day vegan challenge. And after 30 days, I realized that I felt better. I just felt healthier, um, I had more energy and I just felt better about myself. You know, I wasn't contributing to factory farm cruelty anymore. So I just stuck with it and I've never looked back. So did you notice, did you feel any different? Cause you were pretty young. So you probably were pretty healthy anyway. Well, you know, I, would, I was, when I was 14, I don't think I really noticed a big difference uh, going vegetarian, but I also went from uh, probably kind of a junk food eater to a junk food vegetarian. So, um, but when I went vegan, I, I started eating a little more healthfully. I was 24 at that time. And I definitely felt, I felt better for sure. I had, I definitely had more energy. Um, and I just felt lighter, just, I mean, I didn't lose weight. I didn't really have I didn't really need to lose weight, but it was more of a, just that there was a lightness about me, just that I, had never experienced before. So, but so you yeah. never had, you never had weight problems. Uh, when I was not, not really, when I was really young, um, I did have a little bit of weight problem at, you know, seven to eight ish. And I kind of grew into it. I never really did anything about it, but, but uh, just, it kind of runs in my family to be small and, um, but yeah, I've never really had a weight issue, but you know, it's interesting because I was just interviewed for Dr. Doug Graham's podcast and I went vegan in 1977 and people are like, well, how did you do it back then? You know, we didn't have any of the fake meat or fake cheese or even milk in a box. It was easy. You just keep eating junk, but you just don't eat the meat. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of how I did it in 94 when I went vegetarian. It certainly just, I, I just lived on side dishes for a while and then I discovered veggie burgers, you know, and that kind of thing. But I'm going to add, I'm going to add mushrooms now. These are mushrooms that have been sliced. Um, and mushrooms, I think, are really great in chili because they're kind of meaty and they kind of give you that like that chewy, toothsome feel that you like in a chili. So we're going to throw these in. And at this point, you can see if you need to add more water, like I'm, this is dried up a little bit. So I'm going to add a splash of water. And mushrooms tend to make their own liquid as you cook them. So um, once the mushrooms cook down, they should start to create their own liquid. Um, but yeah, I have definitely noticed in the past, you know, five or six years that there's just so much and you, there's nothing you can find or nothing you can want that there's not a vegan version out there. You know, it's just, it's actually made it a little hard to be a healthy vegan because <laughs> there's so much good junk food out there. <laughs> Yep. Just a sec. I've got to ring the bell to thank Jordan Holmes for the super chat donation and Gina. And Gina says, one dollar for every pound I no longer need to carry. I'm grateful for your time, your amazing interviews, Weight Loss Wednesday, the summits, the FFOF group, your books. Thank you. Oh, bell not required. Oops. I guess I should have read that first, but thank you guys so much. So if there's any, yeah, thank you. If everybody could just give me a dollar for every pound they lost, I could retire, huh? Just kidding. Um, yeah, that's awesome. I've definitely heard, I've, I've had a number of friends who have kind of followed your program and had success. That. Diane likes your shirt. Is that from the Herbivore Clothing Company? 
It is. I've had this thing forever, but it's my favorite t-shirt. And I thought it would be good to wear today because I am vegan and I do love you. <laughs> yeah. And she is going to be on the show. Uh, I think it's next month, actually. So that, yeah, she has a book too. Awesome. That's yeah. Awesome. Do you, is any of your family vegan? Um, my cousin and my aunt are both vegan. They've gone vegan in the past probably five or six years. Um, but my, my parents are not vegan, but they are both excellent vegan cooks. I'm an only child. And so, um, whenever I, we do family meals, it just makes sense for us all to eat the same thing. There's no need, you know, there's not a whole bunch of us to feed. So, um, my parents, they're, they're both cooks and they both have adapted almost all of their recipes to be vegan. And so like Thanksgiving's coming up and I'm very excited that my mom's vegan dressing is so good. <laughs> so. That's great. I'm going to add, um, next I've got a chopped chipotle pepper. And uh, this is just, a, chipotle is just a smoked jalapeno. Uh, this is going to add a lot of smoky flavor to the chili. If you can't find, I, they, they come in a can, um, just whole chipotles. And they're in adobo sauce. If you can't find these, you can also use smoked paprika to kind of get that same uh, smokiness. But uh, it wouldn't, this is going to add a little bit of heat as well. So. If you don't like spicy foods, you could also just use smoked paprika instead. But I love chipotle. It's, I think, my favorite of all the peppers. It's so good. So we're going to add this to the mushrooms and the onions. I'm going to cook for just a second. And um, that'll cook down for a second. So, Are you pretty active with your blog? I am. So I blog every... Um, Monday through Thursday. And I mostly share things that is just kind of a day in the life, sort of what I'm eating. That's my favorite kind of blog to read or just like sort of food journals of what everyone's eating. So I'm fascinated by what everyone eats. <laughs> um, I do share some recipes occasionally. Um, and I do cookbook reviews and product reviews. Um, so it's kind of a mix of all that stuff. But um, most days you'll just find kind of a food journal with some pictures. Well. And if you do cookbook reviews, I know a book you could review that just came out a couple of weeks ago. I would love to. Um, so what do you, our guests always, our, our audience always wants to know what our guests, whoever the guest is, uh, what they eat every day. And it sounds like you, you, you do you run every day? Um, I run usually four or five days a week. Um, and then, um, yeah, in a normal day, I, for breakfast, um, I, I'm going to, I'm gonna add the tofu real quick. I'm gonna do that. This is a uh, cubed tofu. We're gonna to add this to the mushrooms and the chipotle. It's just been pressed and drained. Um, you don't have to add tofu to this. So you can add whatever you know, beans could work. We have beans going in too, but you could just do beans if you want. This adds a little extra protein. I didn't marinate it. It's just plain tofu because it, it tends to absorb all the chili flavors anyway. So you really don't need to pre-marinate this. But, I'm going to dump that in and pull up that cook. You want the tofu to get just a little bit brown in here with everything else. Um, but yeah, so as far as what I eat in a day, um, breakfast, on the day that I run, I usually have a smoothie after my run. Um, I'll put a little protein powder in there and some um, frozen fruit, nuts and seeds. Um, and then lunch is usually leftovers. So whatever I had the night before, I'll have leftovers for lunch. And then dinner can be anything. I've actually started um, meal themes for every day, just to kind of help me plan my meals. And so right now I'm doing macrobiotic Mondays. So I'm doing little macro bowls on Mondays, um, taco Tuesdays, tacos, burritos, fajitas, enchiladas, um, world cuisine Wednesday, which can be Indian food or stir fries or um, any kind of food that's not like an American food. And then Thursdays are takeout Thursdays. So go out and support local restaurants. Um, I do freestyle Fridays. So whatever, go, anything wild card, whatever, whatever I want. Saturdays are sandwich Saturdays and I do soup Sundays. So that really helps me plan my meals. And I'll do that for a few weeks until I get tired of it. And then I'll think of some new themes, usually with alliteration. I love alliteration, so. That's cute. I like that. It's fun. So, but um, I'm going to start thinking about that. Yeah, Taco Tuesday seems to be popular. Yeah, and I I, I change the themes up every you know 
usually every couple months, but Taco Tuesday has, has stuck because that will never change. It will always be Taco Tuesday because I'll never get tired of tacos. Uh, uh, Peaches wants to know what kind of protein powder do you use? Um, there's a really good one that I use that No Meat Athlete actually makes called Complement Protein. Um, and it is made with watermelon seed, yellow pea, um, uh, brown, I think, you know, it doesn't have brown rice. There's almond flour, uh, chia seed. It's a whole bunch of different stuff and it's not gonna be the hemp or the, you know, whatever the typical protein powders are made from. Um, and it's uh, really super clean. A lot of vegan protein powders um, from what I've read can have a little bit of heavy metals in them due to the, I think it's from like the hemp protein maybe or so there's one of those vegan protein powder um, staples tends to have a little heavy metals in it. And so this is, they deliberately make it heavy metal free. So it's super clean. Um, and so uh, that's complement protein. It's really good. It's flavorless, unsweetened, so you can add it to anything and it doesn't, um, there's a weird stevia taste or no sugar. Yeah. Yeah. I never liked the stevia in, the, in products. I can, it always had a bitter aftertaste. I'm not crazy about it either. So I'm going to add some beans to this. These are, um, chickpeas and kidney beans. Um, and I just, I just bought cans that I drained and rinsed and put in a bowl. You can make fresh beans from scratch if you want, but um, I'm kind of lazy. And so I like to just buy canned beans and drain and rinse them. I usually get low sodium when I can. Um, these are not low sodium because I just bought them at the store down the street and they don't have a good selection of low sodium beans, but if I'm at Whole Foods or whatever, I'll grab low sodium. What stores do you have where you are? Um, our main grocery store is Kroger, which I think is some, some places have a Kroger, some places have a Smith's, I think is a similar thing to Kroger. Yeah, it's called in where I live, Kroger's is called Ralph's. Ralph's. Same store though. Okay, yeah, they're all like, there's, it's weird wherever you go in the country, it's the same products. They have the same, like, you know, line of like the simple truth organic stuff is, you know, I think throughout all those stores. Um, but yeah, we have mostly Kroger's here. We have a Whole Foods, a Trader Joe's, and a Sprouts, which I love. Um, that's pretty much my main. Those are my three favorite stores, plus Costco. Yeah. I don't have a Costco card, but if I did, I'd probably love it. So. Yeah, I think, so. oh, well, you can get Power Greens. Or, I mean, some of the things you can get there, like the power organic Power Greens, it's just, especially if you eat a lot of greens, it's just, it ends up being really cost effective. Plus a great optical department. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I yeah. bet. You know, um, you can go there once for free just to see if you like it. I should. I definitely have done like the Sam's Club. I think my parents have a Sam's Club card, but I think it's similar, but um, it's like the Walmart brand of Costco. But I think Costco's are, there's more of them and they probably have a I think more grocery, maybe. Yeah, I, I love it. I just, I, just I, don't, I don't go there often. I'm not close to one anymore, but when I do go, I really like it. You know, the first time I went to the South, I can't remember the store I went to. I think it was the Piggly Wiggly and they actually had a bacon aisle, like not just bacon, but a bacon aisle. Wow, that's, we actually had Piggly Wiggly. It was actually started in Memphis. That was, Memphis was the first Piggly Wiggly store. Uh, we don't have them here anymore. They've since closed down. But um, yeah, that's crazy, a bacon aisle. <laughs> yeah, do, do you find, I mean, you know, the South is not known for necessarily healthful eating. Do you, do you, have you noticed any changes in people? Like, have they gotten bigger or is it just your perspective? Because well, you're, you're a tiny person, but you know, they say that, that the obesity rate is higher in the South, and not, not the whole country, but that it, it kind of is a little bit greater there. Yeah, uh, I'm sure it probably is. Um, I've been in the South my whole life, so I don't have a lot to compare it to outside of here, but I definitely know we, you know, here in Memphis, we have a number of restaurants that are, uh, our, one of our vegan places is a raw vegan place. We've got um, several places that cater to like whole food plant-based. Um, and so I, I do see a lot more healthy stuff around here. And now I'm sure there's, there's lots of deep fried, you know, everything and lots of like pork belly and, you know, gross Southern things. So, um, you know, I'm sure the South can use some help yeah. <laughs> in that sense, for sure. <laughs> I'm going to add, um, this is our diced, just diced tomatoes, just one whole 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes with the juice. <laughs> Dump that in. And this is the point where you go ahead and you put everything in here and you let it simmer for a little bit. So um, I'm going to add, this is uh, corn kernels, just uh, frozen, a half cup of frozen corn. Um, 
You can use canned corn if you really want to. It's going to be higher in sodium, but if you do, you may drain and rinse it. Or you can use fresh corn, cut off the cob if you want. But I think frozen is great. So. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and add some spices. And so um, I'm going to add two tablespoons of chili powder. And this is just a Sprouts brand chili powder. Uh, any kind of chili powder you like would work for, for this. Oh, my spoon fell in my pot. My chili powder is stuck. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to add um, just a little bit of ground cumin. I love, I love the flavor of cumin. And so we're just adding a fourth teaspoon because cumin can be a little overpowering. So we don't want it to be too much. And I'm going to add a little bit of, um, this is pink salt, but just any kind of salt's fine. I love using that Himalayan pink salt. I feel like it has just a little better flavor. Um, so we're going to add a half teaspoon of this. And oh. I'm going to add a little bit of the, um, from the chipotle jar, a little bit of the, the sauce, the adobo sauce that the chipotles are in. Um, and the best way to get this is to kind of get your spoon down in the bottom of the can. There's usually a lot of sauce hanging out in there. So it's just going to add just a little bit of extra smokiness. And then you want to add a tablespoon of tomato paste. And this is just going to help it get a little thicker. I'm sorry, two tablespoons of tomato paste. Uh, Linda says, do you have any vegan friends there or is there a vegan group there? Uh, yes, actually. So um, I, I organized a vegan meetup group um, and we haven't met since March because of the pandemic, but we, um, we would actually get together every uh, month. We would pick a different restaurant that's vegan friendly. Uh, it was actually a vegan drinks group. So our, it would have to be a restaurant that was vegan friendly and had uh, alcohol. And so we'd get together and have cocktails and, and, uh, and food. It was, it was a lot of fun. We did it for, I'd say six years straight every month. And then the pandemic hit. And so we're on hold right now, but as soon as things are safe to, to gather in groups again, we'll be back out there doing meetups again. Um, and there's also a vegan group here in Memphis that does potlucks. And I think they also have been kind of on hold since COVID, but, um, yeah, we have quite a bit of uh, a vegan, good vegan community here. Most of my friends are vegan, actually. So I think vegans, once you find your people, you know, it's, it's good to keep like-minded people together. So. Absolutely. Jordan says, what veggies and spices do you use on black beans or any kind of bean for your taco Tuesday? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I love to put chili powder uh, a little bit of cumin is great. And I actually love to throw nutritional yeast in my black beans to kind of give them a cheesy flavor. So just like if you have a can of black beans that you drained and rinsed, I would add maybe a teaspoon of chili powder, um, probably a couple tablespoons of nutritional yeast and um, usually onion powder or garlic powder. Um, once you get all that stuff together, they're really tasty, so. Cool. So, uh, Dina says, what's your favorite alcoholic drink? Did you know that not al not all alcohol is vegan? Did you know that? It did. Yeah. Um, there, there are definitely some beers that you have to watch out for because they've, so some beers have, um, there's like the milk stout, which is kind of a popular beer right now made with lactose. Um, a lot of wines are processed with egg albumin and that kind of thing. So, um, but I, I love beer, so my favorite drink would probably just be a good craft beer, um, an IPA, love a good IPA. So um, in terms of cocktails, I would say probably a Dirty Martini or a Bloody Mary. And Bloody Marys you have to be careful with too, because a lot of Bloody Mary mix has um, Worcestershire sauce, which has anchovies. And so I usually make my own Bloody Marys at home, um, just using tomato juice and, and that kind of thing. Cool. Yeah, it's good. People people don't always realize that, and also people that have celiacs, they can't have certain types of alcohol either. Yeah, and there's a lot of um, beer. The big one. I mean, the beer has a lot of gluten, obviously. So, um, 
we have a brewery here in town that just opened that has a line of gluten-free beers, which I think, I think that's becoming more popular. So that's, that's good. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Where are all your pets? Uh, well, actually one, if I could move my camera up there. So do you see that little fluff up there? <laughs> that must be the cat, not the dog. That's, that's Seymour. He actually lives above my kitchen cabinets. Um, he has everything he needs up there. I, I hate to say he has a litter box up there, but he has a litter box up there. He has food bowls up there. And it's because uh, when we get our dog, who's a rescue pit bull, um, Seymour, I mean, he's, he's the, our dog is cat friendly, but Seymour did not like him. And so he moved out of the cabinets and refused to come down. <laughs> and so um, I had to move all his stuff up there. He can get down if he wants to, but he chooses not to. So he like literally never comes down? No, he's been down to go to the vet a few times, but as soon as I get him off the cabinets, he like tenses up and he's just like, let me back on my cabinet. Aww, um, then you never get to play with him. Yeah, I could crawl up on the counters and um, get up there and give him touches, but um, he's, he's a special cat. He's not like the others. Um, we've got a three other cats they're sleeping there's one in the living room right now and there's one in my desk chair and one in my bedroom and then we have a dog who's um he's in his kennel right now because if i had let him out during this he would have been all over the place on the counters barking so, <laughs> but he's a rescue pit bull he's really sweet the, the, the other three cats don't mind him they they don't love him <laughs> but they don't mind him they tolerate him he's just a lot of energy he's very hyperactive and I think for cats, that's, you know, but they kind of, they keep their distance from each other pretty well. So. Do the other three cats ever visit Seymour? Uh, you know, they used to, they haven't, um, it's been a while since, um, uh, turn this down a little bit. It's been a while since they've gone up there, but they used to go up there and steal his food and had to have to go up on top of the cabinets and get the other cats away from his food bowl. Um, but they, they pretty much leave them alone these days. They're all older. All of our cats are um, between 12 and 16 years old. So, so they're all old cats kind of set in their ways. Great. So uh, the chili is, it's right now it's just simmering and that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, it just simmers for 20 to 30 minutes. Um, and it, you can let it go, you know, I would say 30 minutes is probably best. If you were really hungry, you could eat it in 15 minutes. <laughs> but the longer you let it simmer, the more the flavors will absorb. Um, but I can actually bowl some up if you want to see it. Just put it in a bowl. Absolutely. And could, could we bowl. make this? In, do you think we could make this in the Instant Pot? Um, I think you absolutely could, yeah. And I, um, I don't, I'm not really great with... I've done dried beans on my Instant Pot. I haven't done canned beans. I'm sure they wouldn't, you wouldn't want to cook it too long in the Instant Pot with this canned beans because it might, um, it might get, get too soft. But if you started with dried beans for this recipe and then made sure you had enough liquid, uh, I think it'd be great in the Instant Pot. Um, nice. I'm still learning the bean to water ratio for different beans. So I usually have to just Google whatever, whatever bean I'm cooking to see how long to cook it. Um, I'm gonna scoop some of this up. Dina wants to know, do you run in the morning, afternoon, or evening, and how long do you run for? Um, I usually run in the morning. Uh, if I can't, for some reason, if I can't, you know, there's something going on that morning, or if I have a, a workout class at my gym, which my gym is doing outdoor classes right now and some virtual classes, but if I have a different thing happening that day, I'll, I'll run at night, but much prefer mornings. Um, during the week, I run between three and five miles each day. And then on the weekends, I'll do a long run, usually anywhere from 10 to 16 miles, depending on if I'm training for something like a marathon, I may do a longer run than that, but I'm just maintaining a base. I'll run about that. So here's this chili. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, it's, if I, dip, if I dip it much more, it's going to spill, but, <laughs> but um, it's got mushrooms, tofu, beans, tomatoes. Um, I like the big chunks of tofu. If you're not crazy about that, you can always crumble the tofu. 
as well when you put it in. It, it would be more like a um, like a burger crumble if it was crumbled. But anyway, this was really good on its own. I like to have it on like a vegan hot dogs so we get a chili dog. Um, I love like, actually I was gonna have this tonight uh, over a burrito. I was gonna make a tofu and rice burrito and then pour chili on top of it. So, so you can put chili on anything, baked potatoes, great. So, but. Yeah, I, I think it'd be great over rice too. Oh yeah, yeah. Your rice is great with chili. Yeah, that's my favorite. Well, that looks delicious. And we're going to put the recipe in the show notes. It's, I can't do it before the show because I'm limited to the number of characters, but I will put it in very soon after. Well, thank you so much for the delicious recipe. It was great catching up with you. Yeah, this was awesome. I had a lot of fun. And now I've got dinner ready to go. So <laughs> I know that's what the guests always say, that they like being on the show because then they, they know they're going to have something good to eat. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thanks so much, Bianca. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when we have Jenny Goldfarb on the show. She's going to be talking about her business, The Unreal Deli. And at 1 p.m., the 200th episode of Weight Loss Wednesday is going to be celebrated with an extravaganza. And we're giving away over $1,000 worth of prizes, Instant Pots, Air Fryers, Nutri-Milks, and much more. Thanks again, Bianca. Be well. Yeah, this was awesome. Bye.